after completing your BE, yes. why you go in banking sector? If you want to go banking and you are good in banking, so why you completed your engineering? So far as the Sabri Mala matter is concerned, what's your opinion of, on the Sabri Mala temple? Should women allow to enter or not? Sir, please not come in, sir. No, please come in. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Please be seated, Mr. Thank Goel. You, Thank you. Uh, we'd like you to introduce yourself. So my name is Samir Goel. I hail from Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. After doing my engineering in 2015, I went on to join the IDBI bank as an officer from 2016 to 17. And from 2017, I've been working as a, at the Reserve Bank of India as an officer in Navi, Mumbai. And uh, sir, uh, my hobbies are playing badminton. And apart from my academics, I've also volunteered with the Child Shelter Home in Bhopal. You, you did your schooling for Campbell School, Bombay? Campbell School, Bhopal, sir. Achha, Bhopal. I thought Bombay. Right. Now with the RBI, uh, you're an officer with RBI. I was my, my finding that it's something that's written like uh, you're an assistant. Uh... Sir, I was an assistant for two years from 2017 to 19. What is an assistant? Assistant is a clerical post, sir. Actually. Right. RBI takes at two levels. Right. One at clerical level and one at officer, grade B officer level. Right. So, 17 to 19, I was an assistant. Then in 2019, I cleared the grade B DR examination. Right. And then I joined an office in Mumbai. Have they dropped the grade A examination in the RBI? Sir, there is some assistant to internal examination, but right. I cleared the all India examination. Oh, I see. Thank you. Uh, can you tell us something about the chip industry and the focus of the government of India towards fabrication of chips. What are the latest developments in this area? So India wants to, uh, the, the government wants India to become a, a destination where chip manufacturing takes place. Uh, we have uh, till now been focusing on electronic system design and manufacturing. Uh, so uh, the government, we are, do not have a chip fabrication unit as such in, in the country. So uh, the government is planning to set up chip uh, fabrication units. And for that government has started a semiconductor mission it has started this uh, a PLI scheme also. It has uh, set up electronic management clusters, electronic manufacturing clusters, and the semicon missions are there. Any any development in this area about uh, entering into uh, entering into uh, partnerships with other chip manufacturers? So Foxconn project in Bangalore was uh, is uh, in the pipeline. So Foxconn is uh, going to set up a, a unit in Bangalore. That is a development there. And uh, some other projects are also there in the pipeline. Are you sure about this? So I have heard about this Foxconn project, about this uh, Foxconn Vedanta project. That's yeah, that is going on. But now we are not hearing anything about Foxconn at this point of time. Any other development? Oh, sorry, sir, I cannot. Some initiative coming from Israel? No, sir, Israel I have not even heard about. So sorry, but Israel I have not heard about. I have heard about uh, India's uh, relation with Taiwan, that India's strategic partnership with Taiwan and... Uh, what is a chip packaging? What do you understand by chip packaging? Sorry, the chip packaging, I have, uh, don't have an idea about. Achha, let us say, what is the government scheme? Let us say the government wants some sector to come over here. What is the type of subsidy that the government would like to give to the chip manufacturers who come and establish their production base over here? First is a tax exemption should be there. Like How much? Sir, better than what China and Vietnam are giving. But so, your answer is very generalized in fact, you know. Sir, one of the reasons that I think that we are not being growing is because uh, Vietnam and China are giving better tax exemptions to the industries who are setting up the plants there. So, better tax exemptions there. Secondly, the PLI scheme can be extended, like this performance next incentive scheme. So, tax rebates on that uh, can be given. And thirdly, sir, the land at subsidized prices uh, can be given. and electricity connections so that way the government can help the supporting infrastructure now tell me one thing you are working with the rbi yes sir uh, rbi's repo rate they have still not changed what is the possible reason for that so uh, the rbi has kept the repo rate uh, static at 6.5 percent for now and also the policy stands at withdrawal accommodation the reason being firstly that RBI wants to bring the inflation that is around 5.4% to the 4% target mark. And secondly, sir, uh, liquidity the situation, RBI wants better transmission of rates. 
uh, to the monetary policy transmission. So they have kept the uh, rate at static 6.5%. Do you think that the government and the RBI are, are working across uh, at, uh, at cross purposes? Like the RBI is wanting to keep the inflation rate between 2 and 4%, the government wants it between 4 and 6% because of its development in initiatives. So RBI has a bracket of 4 plus minus 2%. So uh, it wants to keep it uh, as close to 4% as possible. Uh, the government also is uh, is targeting that only. And even the FMS said, finance, Honorable Finance Minister said that uh, the, both the government and RBI are in sync uh, at keeping that inflation in check. What is the rate of inflation at this point of time? It is around 5.4% for this financial year. Retailing a CPI right sociology has been one of uh, has been your option yes sir what is the difference between sanitization and brahmanization sanskritization is a process in which a low caste tribe takes up the customs values ways of life of our upper twice born caste with a aim to gain their position in the social hierarchy uh, in the future Brahmanization is a subset of uh, Sanskritization when uh, the imit imitation is of the Brahmins only. Whereas Sanskritization, it can be imitation of uh, Vaishyas or other uh, upper caste also. Can you give specific examples of both? Sir, so like uh, like the study of uh, M.S. Srinivas of Korks of Mesur uh, that is there, that they take up the customs of Brahmins and uh, so that they can uh, get their status like eating, like uh, avoiding eating meat and uh, uh, for wearing clothes like them so uh, that is an example and now sanskritization as process is now is not in the vogue now because of the government's policy of uh, of this reservation and also this uh, development benefits so the opposite is now going on desanskritization is going on so co contemporary examples are not there of sanskritization are not there yes. right thank you amir goel ji sir after completing your be yes, why sir. you go in banking sector if you want to go banking and you are good in banking so why you completed your engineering? Sir, actually when I started my engineering, I was interested in engineering. But uh, around second to third year, I realized that I want to go for civil services. But since I wanted to be independent, I wanted to give other exams also, so that uh, I can prepare with civil services with these exams. So RBI was a, a good option for that. So I joined RBI and start, kept my preparation for civil services. What will you do your engineering knowledge? We get to... You, Spoil your four years, uh, sir. I also thought like that, but uh, unfortunately, but fortunately, when I joined RBI, I, I got a chance to use my engineering knowledge, and with the civil service, I will get mo even more chance to use them. Suppose you are selected in IFS, and now you are, in, you will be posted in a foreign country. How will you apply your engineering knowledge in that case? Sir, energy diplomacy is a big part of India's foreign policy. Like India is engaged with Nepal, Bhutan about this engineering projects or maybe this uh, a one world grid initiative that we are taking. So energy diplomacy is an important part of foreign policy. Okay, what is on grid and off grid solar power? On grid is connected to the solar uh, solar uh, national grid. Off grid is like uh, that is a uh, standalone solar uh, solar panels that are there, not connected to the grid, supplying to the place where they are situated only. Okay. Recently, uh, Elon Musk introduced a new chip for brain yes, that sir. is called Neuralink. Yes, sir. Do you think this is not good for health or it can be used in human brain? So, still trials are going on, and uh, so people who are suffering from paralysis or other diseases, for them, it will it, is a, it will be a good thing. And uh, yes, there are some ethical issues as well as health issues that it can affect the brain and. Uh, uh, it, there can be adverse impacts, but it but it's still in the pilot stages. So once only we are confirmed that it is, has advantages, so we can go forward with it. So we are we are investing huge amount in solar power plant, like in Badla power plant. But recently, Chinese engineer invented a battery called Beta Volt for mobile. It will its battery will drain after fifty years. So what will our future? We will go in the nuclear battery or solar plant. So we are uh, going for solar because large projects uh, can be uh, can be sustained by solar only. 
where a small scale application like battery like uh, this uh, mobile batteries we are going through a lithium ion battery only so uh, both uh, ways we are going it's not only we can go in a single way both we have to focus on but solar energy is so costly its infrastructure and in, in instruments and etc which we are using in this uh, to produce the energy it's so costly initial cost is low but once we set up once it gets uh, there so efficiency will improve and we can save save money after 4 or 5 year anyone can get its return of investment it is good sir for a larger purpose like environment and all it is good sir that is very important after 4 year the capacity of its charging capacity and battery also drain so like additions are there like it can it is upscale it can be upscaled easily like uh, if you want we can we can upscale by increasing the battery storage or increasing the panels okay how can we able the cost system in india so cost is a is a reality social reality that we face i am not sure that we can abolish uh, this system but uh, it can be with the benefits that the government is giving like uh, without seeing the cost they are giving the benefits so, so the, it become irrelevant after suppose time. there is no any cost system so what is the use of a reservation on the basis of cost the cost system is there to stay uh, that as i said that it's difficult to abolish and it's not practical also Dif difficulty is another thing you want to abolish or not Sir, if I, my opinion is I, I wish to abolish because everybody should be born equal and should be treated equal. So, I, so what measures should you take to abolish the caste system? So first of all, uh, the awareness among the people, uh, understanding that we all belong to the same uh, same mold and we are uh, like we are don't belong to a caste. We belong to first of a country and nation as a whole. Uh, secondly, the way the government, uh, the way the government and the other institution function. Uh, the trust of the people have to be one that uh, their caste does not matter in any of the issues. Okay, so far as the Sabri Mala matter is concerned, what's your opinion of, on the Sabri Mala temple? Should women allowed to enter or not? Women should be allowed to enter, sir. Okay, suppose Supreme Court verdict will come against the women and Supreme Court will say women are not allowed to enter. What will you do? Sir, so decision on the Supreme Court has to be followed. But in my opinion, uh, discriminating on the basis of gender to enter a temple is, is not appropriate. Okay. Why you are from Bhopal? No? Yes, sir. <coughs> Bhopal is on near Narmada river. Uh, yes, not exactly. Like, Narmada does not flow through as such Bhopal. But Very near to near Narmada place. river. Why Narmada call as a Dabang river? I have not heard it. Sorry, I have not heard why it's called Dabangu, but it's like it falls Duhandar waterfalls and also it's with great speed it flows and it covers a lot long long distance. It's like a west flowing river, one of the best flowing rivers. Yeah. What is the significance of Bhim Betka? Bhim Betka is a UNESCO Her World Heritage Site. It is an, a site of prehistoric uh, paintings and it shows the early man in different uh, occupation like hunting and uh, uh, hunting and uh, uh, like uh, uh, group hunting and uh, other day to day activities. So it uh, give record of the early life of man. Okay. Why was the books war forest was famous? Books on forest. So which book? Uh... Books war forest of Madhya Pradesh. Okay, Buxava, okay, so it was for diamond mining, it was being cleared for diamond mining, Buxava project, okay. Okay, so what do you think about this? It's legal or not? From On ethical ground, is it moral to cut a forest for diamond? At the present scenario where the science is as good to build its own artificial diamond, so why we need to cut off a whole forest for mining a diamond? Even the artificial diamond is more shining than the natural diamond. Yes, sir. Sir, on ethical uh, uh, basis, I, I, in my opinion, it is not a uh, right to cut the forest because forest has not only e economic value but social value for the people and environmental value, of course. 
so on that ground it is not uh, required and if at all the government wants to take some steps a proper environmental impact assessment and social impact assessment needs to be carried out consensus of the people and their opinion should be taken into account and yes as pointed out artificial diamond mission is already by the government it's in one of the budget it has come also so more focus should be on alternatives to these diamonds okay you are currently you are working as a manager in reserve bank of india yes, sir. The financial year of RBI is different from the financial year of the finance ministry or same? Now they are seeing sir. They are seeing. So why we are not thinking about the finance year with the country financial from 1st January to 20, 31st December? Why we are still following 1st April? So, so I don't remember the reasons but like it has been doing it has been like what should take what your opinion about it when we is when we some somewhere when we talk about a financial year we say 20 uh, 23 to 2024 why this hectic schedule so maybe in my opinion because seasonality of the vegetables like a uh, kharif season rabi season is there so a lot of economy depends on agriculture for a, for a small purpose we can so this is the only thing i can think about i am like i am also one many time wonder that why we are not keeping like that but uh, uh, for the for many reasons suppose you got power to change this financial year what will you do you will still remain this old system or you will convert this financial year to 1st january to 31st december First is I would try to understand the reasons why it is so and okay. if at all a better system can be devised or it can be changed, uh, seeing the practicalities and economics of that addition can be taken. But first I need to understand why exactly it is like that. Okay. So, okay. Indians are not good to uh, invest in stock market. Still Indians are very uh, interested to purchase land, bank FD, not good in intraday trading and stock market. Why? So the sir, stock market now the retail investors are increased, but yes, it is below par. So because firstly, sir, the awareness about the stock market options. Secondly, the products are like very much uh, not customized. Like once a size fits all, up, uh, products are there. So for retail investors, the products are not many more. Thirdly, the advent there's a, a investment in land because of huge amount of black money also. That is, uh, uh, in stock market you require white money and you require through online payments only. So that may be one of the reasons that people are preferring to. Okay, uh, RBI recently ban on Paytm. Yes. Although Paytm is working very good, is give so much job and in, in in India there is a huge role of Paytm to encourage this microfinance and digital payment system. When payment when Paytm start initiative, I think Paytm is the single player at that time. Yes. Sir. Paytm and when. Right now, when Paytm started and the rebels company come in the market, now whole India is digital line and a, a very small seller has its own QR code and at the time RBI banned Paytm. Is it good or not? It's very negative impact on the other thing. So RBI took the decision only after giving a lot of warnings to Paytm and it was it was for the benefit of the customers only. Because what warning Paytm? What warning RBI give to Paytm? RBI sir issued letters to the Paytm that the, our top management went to the Paytm. They also talked about why they are not following the KYC norms, why they are not following the compliances that have come into the RBI regulatory reports. So a lot of time uh, warnings have been given, but uh, an RBI has firstly banned only the Paytm payments bank. It has not banned the Paytm UPI app. It is very much functional. So, if the Paytm complies with the regulations and uh, follows the norms, it can again... But India, it's a very huge rumor about Paytm and the share price of Paytm fall down tremendously. Yes, sir. What will happen in news, uh, other companies like Paytm and other microfinance companies, they, people are not uh, have good faith. So this uh, this uh, uh, this action will help increase the customer's faith about the ability of the regulator to manage things. So other fintech firms are also following the path. They are also now becoming KYC compliant. RBI is engaging with these companies also. Why Paytm not follow the RBI uh, KYC compliance? But very little thing to complete at the time of digital era. There is very few step to follow the KYC norms. There is a link. Uh, uh, yes, sir sent to the new customer to fulfill this KYC form. What 
Paytm itself has some problem related to KYC. That's why Paytm not following this. Even Paytm know this. If if he will not follow all the revolution of RBI, and then RBI one day it will ban. Yes. But what the problem RBI uh, Paytm faces? So Paytm has said that it is facing the legacy issues of those account pre two thousand sixteen accounts are there when the pay payments bank was not there. So that time the KYC was not done. But uh, it is a responsibility of Paytm to and uh, to get this KYC updated. And also to ensure that uh, every every KYC is correct, like there were news that one thousand uh, accounts were linked to some same PAN number. So this is a major uh, discrepancy that is there. So it needs to clear the discrepancy. Uh, sorry, I don't know the uh, other reasons why. What is internal report so is there? Very simple technology to filter this same PAN number. A very simple yes, software uh, which uh, Paytm install in its software and give a, a simple update to the its all customer. The any same uh, account number which is linked to the same yes, panel uh, PAN number, it will be automatically blocked until and unless they will completed their KYC. Yes. Why it's a huge risk Paytm take. Other news has been that the government is seeing some money laundering issues also in that. So maybe that can be an angle that has been also looked at. Some ill doing has been there because the official report has not come, but uh, uh, report the enforcement directorate is also getting involved. So, so okay. maybe that issue is there. Okay. Why RBI called bankers of the bank? So RBI is called the banker of the banks because firstly it maintains the current account of the banks. Secondly, it uh, it uh, it is responsible for settling of interbank transactions. And lastly, it uh, it also lend our last resort to the banks if uh, they are facing liquidity issues. It comes to their rescue and uh, saves them. So, okay, without permission of uh, finance ministry, how much money RBI print its own sovereignty? RBI itself have two printing press, but not power to print money, not power to print currency. Without approval of central government, it means finance ministry. How much money RBI can print? Sorry, sir, I have not uh, heard about this limit about how how much can be print. As per my knowledge, uh, RBI is free to print the money as per the requirements of the economy as and the changing value notes like substitution of the already existing currency without permission of finance ministry. Sir, I have not uh, read that RBI asked for permission any time. But what I have read is that uh, the two bases on which like transaction basis and also the replacement basis. So in that uh, RBI decides the printing. Of Why the RBI not printing one rupee note and coin? So that is the responsibility of the government, and RBI only circulates it. No, no, I am talking RBI print uh, every notes hundred rupees, two hundred, five hundred, and uh, still two hundred rupees note are not in uh, the transition phase. But why RBI not mint the coin? So it is as per the RBI Act. RBI Act says the central government has the responsibility of doing that. So uh, as per the RBI Act, is RBI is not uh, uh, doing that. Okay, and so far as the one rupee note also, uh, finance ministry will print. Yes, sir. So why there is two paths of the same purpose? RBI is capable to print a large amount of currency. So why a single same department will be, uh, have the finance ministry hold? There is no need. So I have to check this thing. Why there is a reason for that? Uh, because I know that the RBI is not printing one rupee note. But uh, reasons are I have to check. Okay, last question. Okay. How many members in board of RBI? Twenty-one members, sir. Okay, can we cater this in separate? Okay. Uh, sir, RBI governor and four deputy governors, two finance ministry officials, six, like seven, and government of uh, like uh, government of India nominated members are there from local boards. Every local board four members are there. Okay, okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What is the difference between hobby and games? So hobby is a is a wider term. Like it can be anything like uh, playing games or maybe some musical instrument. Whereas a game is a particular uh, sport. It is like a, it's a it's a subset of that specific to to like a, what you play on a field. So there is a different column for hobby and different column for sport. So now, in that context, what is your hobby and what is your sport? So my sport has been the playing. I've been badminton, playing badminton, and regarding the extra co-curricular hobbies, I have been teaching in a child shelter home. Okay. Tell me something about Bhopal. 
If I come to Bhopal, where will you take me to see around? Welcome to Bhopal. Bhopal is the capital of Madhya Pradesh. So if you land at the Raja Bhoj International Airport, I will firstly take you to the VIP road. We have to pass by that VIP road only. So by that time you can see the upper lake in the VIP road. Then I will take you to the One Vihar National Park. It is one of the one of the finest national parks in the country. Uh, after that, uh, I can uh, bit, I can in between uh, have you some Bhopal cuisine also like poha jalebi and uh, tea for you. And after that, we can move on to some uh, places like Sachi nearby places like Sachi, Bhimbetka, and Udaygiri caves. And uh, and also, if you are interested, if the, you are interested in some uh, more uh, tourism, we can go to Billa Mandir or maybe uh, some places like a, uh, like a tribal museum if you are into it. So we can go there these places also. We will talk a lot about Jahanuma Palace. What is so special about it? So, Hanuma Palace is a hotel that is in the VIP road only. Hmm. Uh, it is a heritage structure. It was all, all a heritage structure then converted to a hotel. Um, I don't think there is anything special about it because it's like uh, more of like same uh, like Hanuma Palace, Nuru Sabha. They are all like uh, heritage hotels types. But uh, I can't find anything very special about them. Okay. There has been some change in the PF rates. Which have been announced very recently. Yes, I, I think 8.5 percent from 8.15. I'm not wrong. 8.25 from 8.15. But there is some there is some change. Yeah, increases there, sir. Yes. There is something called Vision India 47. Yes, sir. What is it all about? What what does it entail? So it wants to make India developed Vikshit Bharat by 2047. Hmm. And uh, it has a vision for that, like. Uh, so where, where do you see your economy in forty-seven? According to this, thirty trillion dollar economy. There, okay. They are talking about. All right. And uh, what is the way forward? How are they going to achieve it? So they are. What steps are they going to take? Uh, what have they? Uh, uh, how have they charted the route for this? What do they want to do for this? So they have uh, made specific sector-wise uh, targets like for manufacturing, they want to add specific things and services and then agriculture. And uh, so, so I'm not sorry, gone through the entire document, but uh, briefly what I have uh, is like sector-wise they are going for it. Okay. A reservation. Yes, sir. When did it start? What was the relevance then? And with the introduction of EWS, what has been the impact on the people? And do you think it should go on endlessly or it should stop somewhere? So firstly, reservation started, I think, 1920s. Then I think Madras, Travancore were the first uh, 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 southern states that started uh, in reservation, first of all. After that, the constitution came into being. So then uh, scheduled castes and scheduled tribes have constitutionally mandated reservation. And then came the Mandal Commission report when the OBCs also got reservation. EWS is a very welcome move by the government to to bring the to increase the, the reservation and to bring the people who are not economically well off but have not got the reservation benefits. And coming to the last part of the question that it should go industry, I believe that reservation should should continue. But like the recent uh, Supreme Court uh, hearing is going on, that uh, those who have already benefited can be like a creamy layer and SCRSTs can be brought. What has been brought in OBCs? Can there be a period for this? Uh, this has to be decided by consensus. There should be a this, there should be a sunset clause for that. Like till uh, when you want to achieve the when we want to achieve these things. Like till when you want the cap to be there. They are extending it after every ten years and fifteen years. But uh, there should be some clause for that. Why are they not able to remove this? On the contrary, they are increasing it every uh, now and then. So it, it is, is 60 40. So it is, uh, it is 60 40 yes, yes, almost. Yes, 60 so, so, how does it impact other people, the meritorious? Uh, so, reservation is something that is constitutionally mandated and required also. But uh, there can be better targeting of reservation. But, uh, uh, but uh, I think reservation is very much important in this present context also. No, you think uh, in the larger interest, is it still required? What is there in the constitution? There are a lot of amendments in the constitution that can happen. Do you propose any changes? Uh, sir, I, no, sir. As per reservation is concerned, I don't propose changes, but uh, yes, subclassification can be there where those, firstly, those who are benefited can be kept out 
and secondly those who are the most backward among the SCs and STs can be given a subcategorization of benefits can be there. So better targeting of benefits. So it should be social based or economically uh, economic based? It should be socio-economic both uh, so for the social disability that they have felt and also the economic realities that we are facing. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Samir. Yes, sir. You have interest in badminton. Yes, sir. Now, in the last couple of years, yes, sir. we have not seen new players coming up in India. No. Saina, Sindhu, Shrikant, one Lakshasen. After that, and then doubles we have. But yes. we want to be the global Super. hub of badminton. What is the reason? So, firstly, the players are coming. It's not like players are not coming. Uh, like uh, they are doubles player of Thresa, uh, of uh, Jolly Pole. Uh, the double, um, women doubles player is coming up. Uh, there are other few players also in the junior level that are coming up. Uh, one of the possible reasons can be like, uh, first of all, there was COVID for 2-3 years. So, maybe the gap in training of some players can be there. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, maybe the tournaments were not uh, getting uh, on time. So, the players are not able to perform in the national or international events. So, maybe that may be the reason. But yes, many players yeah, are there. Generally, I all our players, mm. they are above 25, above 27, almost reaching in their 30s. So, we should have someone in their 90s and 20s. Which are the names that you have heard of? Sir, I heard one player, Tabishi Khan, but she is from Bhopal only, but uh, she is now playing for UAE because her dad not is... for said, India, I am saying, not for UAE. Uh, sir, one Priyanshu, uh, Priyanshu Singh is there from MP. I'm okay. So, yeah. we broadly agree that there is some shortage. Yes. So, you can't name, I also don't remember. Yes. So, what can be done? Tell me some one or two major uh, initiative that you would suggest that will create the atmosphere environment where we can get more players. So, firstly, uh, I can suggest the following steps. Firstly, sports as a badminton as a career, like uh, they can be uh, caught uh, early, like the players who have the potential through some coaches, they can be caught early and they can be trained suitably. So that while they compete. That is uh, applicable to all sports. Yes, sir. Something with badminton. So, uh, sporting infrastructure in badminton. Like I remember I don't have a badminton court in my school that time. So every school should have a badminton court and also the coaches and also the technical technical aspect has to be taken into account. Like many times technical aspect, it's a technical sport also. So technical aspect should be better clarified. All right. Now, you know, what are the major characteristics of bureaucracy given by Max Weber? So, there are the following characteristics. Firstly, bureaucrats is a formally organized, uh, formally and nationally organized system. Secondly, they are governed by rules. Thirdly, there is a chain of command. Fourthly, bureaucrats is a full time profession and, uh, and the officers are expected to do their uh, performance at the, at the highest level. Firstly, uh, bureaucrats are uh, selected by merit. Like, uh, sixthly, the, the promotions are by like uh, seniority or uh, merit or a combination of both. And, the, and lastly, the bureaucrats should not use their offices for private means, but for public ends only. So, you tell me anything in these lists that you have suggested, you would like to change. That will help the bureaucracy become more effective, more efficient, more creative. So these promotions by merit can be more streamlined like now the promotions are basically by seniority. So the performance appraisal should be a dynamic one 360 degree one where not only the review of your uh, senior officer but also downward accountability of the people you serve should be taken into account while promoting. Oh, that's one. Yeah. Anything else? Secondly sir, in every formal organization there should be some informal mechanisms also like bureaucrat is governed by formal rules. But there should be some informal channels like uh, through which the people, the bureaucrats can interact with the public so that they can uh, elicit their views also. Like what is happening with the now that the government is asking for opinions on different issues on through social media and all. So that can be better streamlined through rules. All right. Now, you know, you have uh, put IFS as your second choice. Yes, sir. So 
India and his neighborhood. Yes, sir. You know, we are the largest economy, largest in size, but we have so many issues with our neighbors. We are not able to carry our neighbors with us. We have neighborhood first policy. Do you think it has worked? So India's neighborhood policy has worked, but the issue has been that our neighbors has been for, uh, been uh, been uh, involved in their own problems only. For example, like Pakistan's internal democracy is in a mess, and then again in Bangladesh there has been issues with the democratic setup and high debt they are facing. With Nepal, uh, with Myanmar again the military junta has taken over there. So I will not say India is lacking, but the these countries unfortunately are facing their own internal disturbances. And like Sri Lanka, debt crisis is there. Maldives again, the change of government. So, so you tell me, as someone, mm. India, which is facing all these problems in a neighborhood, what can India do? How can India's neighborhood first policy become more effective? So, following can be done. Firstly, the country-specific approach should be there. There should not be a one-size-fits-all approach. Uh, like with Sri Lanka, that India helped in debt crisis settlement with the Paris Club. Uh, then secondly, uh, India is also now willing to engage with Taliban also in Afghanistan to protect its interest. Thirdly, India's support to Nepal and Bhutan, like through power projects and all, can be streamlined. With Myanmar, India can engage with the military junta to restore the democracy. And I will suggest India should follow the Gujral doctrine that is there, that India should help the neighbors without expecting anything from them in return. Like what China is doing is this uh, through debt trap initiative india should avoid doing that and in increase its soft power okay so you know it's all very idealistic to say that we should not expect anything in return does the international politics work on this principle that we should give to our neighbors but we should not expect anything in return sir ideally like the doctrine says that we should not expect but uh, at least if we not monetarily or like materialistic things, at least support or to the government on issues like terrorism or maybe stopping cross-border terrorism, supporting democracy, th this much support should come from the neighbors. So not something, we should expect something. Like, uh, yes, on these issues. We can't say that we should not expect anything in return. Means like materialistic or maybe financial or maybe not, but yes, in these issues, on global issues, they should come like climate change and all, they should come, come and support the world. All right. You said India is... Uh, engaging with the Taliban. Is it correct? On the one hand, we say the Taliban are the terrorists. They have uh, been uh, responsible for coming across the border, killing people in Jammu and Kashmir. And now we want to engage with them. Isn't it very contradictory in our policy? There is no continuity. Yes, sir. There is a dilemma because we have always stood for Afghan-led, Afghan-controlled dialogue. Uh, but the ground reality says that if we don't engage the, with the Taliban, uh, we will not be may not be able to protect our interest in the in the Afghanistan. Like we have constructed their uh, uh, parliament, we have operating the hospitals there. We have a diaspora. We have some diaspora also there. So and also the strategic ports of uh, Ghadar port. Uh, this uh, uh, Chabbar port is there in Iran. So for the infrastructure projects, so uh, we have to engage with them. But we have to make sure that. Uh, and the Taliban respect the human rights and of the people and also so the gender. we should not follow any principle. After all, except for China, no country recognizes the Taliban. Very few countries are engaging with the Taliban. You are saying that we should engage. Sir, it should not be like, uh, it should be like a uh, principal distance have to be maintained with Taliban. We are not recognizing them. But still, uh, at back channel talks can happen so that uh, at least our infrastructure projects and uh, some continuity is maintained. And there, are, there may be an attempt to restore democracy. So, all right. Thank you. Samir Goel. Yes, sir. देखिए आप RBI में manager हैं और banking में आपका एक लंबा experience है. तो RBI से जितने question बन सकते हैं ना, you should cock your rifle before any question. मतलब आने से पहले you have to ready for ambush. मतलब आपको आरबीआई से अगर क्वेश्चन बैंकिंग से कोई आया ना आपको सोचने का टाइम नहीं होना चाहिए आपका इंटरव्यू में अभी एक महीना टाइम है कितने क्वेश्चन है दस हजार से ऊपर का अगर नोट करेंसी छापनी है ना आरबीआई को तो आरबीआई स्टेटरी बॉडी फॉर एग्जीक्यूशन अपने एग्जीक्यूशन में स्टेटरी है 
ये आप मॉनिटरियल पॉलिसी के लिए है रेपो रेट बढ़ा खटा सकता है बट अगर आर को आप खुला छूट दे देंगे अपना नोट छापने के लिए पैरल इकोनॉमी खड़ा कर देगा आप ऐसे नहीं छोड़ सकते ना तो वो उसको दस हजार से ऊपर का अगर प्रिंट करना है वैल्यू उसको मस्ट है तो टेक परमिशन दो प्रिंटिंग पेस जो है आज भी वो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट के अंडर में आता है ये सर देवास अग, वाला और हाँ अब दो प्रिंटिंग प्रेस है वो आरबीआई के अंडर में आता है तो आरबीआई रिक्वायरमेंट बताती है लिक्विडिटी का क्या प्रेस है एम वन एम टू एम एम से फोर तक वो उसके पास पूरा आइडिया है वो एक डिपार्टमेंट है बट आप वहां पर ना एकदम से लैक कर गए थे तो मुझे मैं आई थिंक मैंने तो बहुत टाइम से बट मुझे इसको आई थिंक आई डोंट नो हाउ सरप्राइजिंगली मुझे पता नहीं था ये चीज और कहीं ट्रेनिंग में भी ऐसा बताया नहीं गया कि वो परमिशन लेनी पड़ती है नहीं नहीं आप ऐसे भी देखिए तो आप परमिशन तो लेना पड़ेगा ना कोई डिपार्टमेंट वरना तो देश की इकोनॉमी दो मिनट में उड़ा दें लोगों लोग सपोज किसी दिन गवर्नमेंट आर में कई कई बार हुआ था होता है टसल कभी गवर्नर में अभी आपका रिसेंट देखे होंगे रघुराम राजन जी के समय हल्का सा सर वो कोई बहुत टसल नहीं होती है वो डिपार्टमेंटल है अपना वो चीज़ यहाँ पे दूसरा था कि क्वाइन और एक रुपए के नोट में और गवर्नमेंट अभी भी रखती है सेंट्रल वहाँ पे उसका एक आप आप चूंकि वो आपका डिपार्टमेंट है आप उसको बेटर ढंग से अपने डिपार्टमेंट में एक बार सीनियर लोग से डिस्कस कर लीजिए वो ज़्यादा बेटर रहेगा क्योंकि डिपार्टमेंट की चीज़ें कुछ आर होती है कुछ सुप्रीम कोर्ट होती है इसकी बहुत सारी चीज़ें पब्लिक डोमेन में नहीं आ पाती आप वहाँ देख लीजिएगा दूसरा सबरीमाला में ऑल ऑफ द सडन कोई भी चीज़ अंडर जूरिस्डिक्शन है Never guess anything. जब सुप्रीम कोर्ट में मैटर अंडर है जुडिशियल है तीन बेच जजेज के पास गया था सबरीमाला का मैटर तीन जजेज ने हाथ खड़ा किया भैया अपर बेंच को दीजिए आप दो मिनट में फैसला दे दिए मुझे सर अपना अपनी ओपिनियन में दिया नहीं नहीं कोई भी चीज अगर कोर्ट और भी सुप्रीम कोर्ट के अंदर में है तो आपका ओपिनियन दो मिनट में खत्म हो जाएगा वहां पर तो बचिएगा कोई भी चीज अगर सुप्रीम कोर्ट का है तो उससे दोनों को परमिशन मिलना चाहिए थोड़ा बोला था की बट हाँ आपका हिसाब नहीं है यहाँ पे सोशियोलॉजी के हिसाब से आपका ऑप्शनल है और आपसी से जान बुझ के पूछा जाएगा ये चीजें यहाँ पे तो कई बार कॉन्ट्रोडिक्टिव चीजों से ना ओपिनियन देने से सोचिएगा थोड़ा सा बचे लेफ्ट राइट right ना होके उस पोजीशन पे थोड़ा सा बीच से निकलिएगा थोड़ा थोड़ा मार्क्स देखिए आपका सिलेक्शन तो होना है ठीक है बट हम लोग क्या मेन कोशिश क्या है इस फीडबैक का कि तस्पीस मार्क्स और बढ़ जाए सो देट कि आपको अपने अच्छा कैडर मिल सके जो आपका चॉइस है कैडर चेंज करना मतलब दूसरा जन्म लेना एक तरह से समझिए बहुत टफ चीज है कैडर चेंज और अच्छा प्रेफरेंस का आपको जॉब मिल सके आपके पास अच्छा टाइम है जैसा सर ने बताया कि आप पूरा लिस्ट बना के रखिए सोशियोलॉजी से क्या क्या चीजें हो सकती हैं बैंकिंग से और इंजीनियरिंग से मतलब ओवरऑल आपका डेफ जो है उसके लिए आप रेडी फॉर फायरिंग पोजीशन होने चाहिए क्योंकि वो डेफ में जो आप लिखे हैं ना अगर वहां आप अटकेंगे तो ग्रिल करने लगेंगे आपको डेफ के अलावे अगर वो कोई चीज पूछते हैं वहां आपका सर हमको इस बारे में कोई आइडिया नहीं है वो क्रॉस करके निकल जाए क्योंकि डेफ आपने भरा है तो जो आपका स्पेसिफिकेशन है वो आपको एनी हाउ आना चाहिए ड्राइवर को खाना बनाने ना आए कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है ड्राइवर को गाड़ी चलाने ना आए फिर वो ड्राइवर क्यों है ओके तो आपके पास इनफ टाइम है स्ट्रेस में आ गए आप थोड़ा सा कब सर और करेंसी में भी दो जो हमने अपनी बुक है किताब उसमें पढ़ी है उसमें यही था की बट जो आपने बताया मैं जो उस पर देखूंगा वही मैं क्योंकि ये तो मेजर पॉइंट है बिकॉज अच्छा वो आपने कवर कर लिया बाद में कोई पूछता तो और मुश्किल होता है हाँ थोड़ा सा आप इसको देख लेंगे होता है कभी कभी क्या होता है ना इंसान छोटी छोटी चीजें ध्यान हाँ, से उतर जाती है हो जाती है बहुत ग्रांटेड लेते हैं उसको ग्रांटेड है और ये प्राइम मिनिस्टर थे हमारे मनमोहन सिंह और आर के गवर्नर रहे थे हालांकि उनके साथ टाइम का नोट तो अभी मेरे ख्याल से मार्केट में अब होगा भी नहीं उतना पुराना देखा था थोड़े दिन पहले देखा मैंने महीने पहले मैंने ओनली प्राइम मिनिस्टर थे जिनका मतलब साइन भी मिलेगा बट ड्यू टू आर बी आई गवर्नर थे इस वजह से ना कि प्राइम मिनिस्टर की वजह से तो कभी कभी एक दिमाग में वो आ जाता है ठीक है बाकी आपका परफेक्ट है जैसा सर ने बताया आप उसको देख लीजिएगा बट नोट कर करके ठीक है आपको कोई डाउट है तो पूछिए नहीं सर मुझे कोई डाउट नहीं मुझे तो बस वही था कि एक मॉक्स में ये क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं कि आरबीआई से सिविल सर्विस आई क्यों बनना चाहते हो इतने साल तो आरबीआई में अच्छा काम कर रहे हो तो उसके लिए सर मैंने वही बोला जॉब डाइवर्सिटी 
और आर बी एज ए करियर प्रोग्रेशन फॉर्म उनको ही पता होता है क्या आंसर आने वाला है सर वही मेरा आंसर है अभी उसके आगे तो मैं मतलब मतलब वो मुझसे लास्ट डे कोई क्रॉस क्वेश्चन नहीं करी थी मैंने जो पूछा मैंने बता दिया यही तो आसनी क्वेश्चन ये आपका कौन सा अटैम्प्ट अभी फिफ्थ सर इंटरव्यू सेकंड पहले वाले में कितना मार्क्स था 168 चलिए इसमें तो 200 के आसपास आना चाहिए उससे होगा अच्छा हो जाएगा सर ठीक है हाँ चलिए ऑल द बेस्ट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू